morning, Word of Faith family. Welcome to this wonderful, wonderful, glorious morning. Um, we have welcome. We actually woke up this morning with a glorious rain. And so welcome to a lovely Sunday morning. We are so glad to see you all. Um, just um, in, my, in the studio this morning, I am very privileged to have, I, I want to say, a special, special pastor, Pastor Abby Blichnot. And Abby, if you can just welcome all the people this morning. So it's ex- quite exciting. I just want to say good morning, Dion. I see you uh, you were on, on the ball quite <laughs> early. So all the way from Colchester, um, I hope you are not, you're not driving currently and you're actually just stationed. <laughs> that would be wise. Yeah. Well, he so, says he's watching. <laughs> he's watching. So, so we are so excited because, good morning, Helen. Uh, we're so excited because this we are celebrating so many wonderful things. And uh, we're going to be talking a lot about this. So I'm very very, very pleased to have you in the studio because I do believe that we've come a long way. So I said to um, Pastor Abby this morning, I said, so how did you come become a, a member of Word of Faith Christian Center? Well, you can't help but think what God has done in your life when you celebrate 40 years. And, um, you know, I've been thinking, hey, I've been at the church for a little bit over 20 years, almost uh-huh. 23 years. And I came to Port Elizabeth born and raised in, in Cape Town. I came as a 24, 25 year old, very naive. And um, I can just say thank you, Lord, for placing me in this amazing church because I have grown leaps and bounds. Now, something about Abby is, Abby, I was born into this church. How did you start? <laughs> I got engaged. <laughs> So God, yeah. God just knows when he brings people together. He, he got you all the way from Cape Town to come to Port Elizabeth yes. to make a difference. And he had a different story to your story. Isn't it incredible? It's really, it really is. So something we want to just remind everybody about, elections are happening this year. Yes, very and, importantly. Um, we have, uh, there's an initiative that is an incredible initiative. And if you can tell us about this wonderful, it's not just an initiative, I think it's a God-given plan because prayer really works. If you can tell us some more about this, this that we are doing at Word of Faith. Well, the elections are taking place on the 29th of May this year. And already last year, uh, Pastor Richard felt that we needed to pray for our country. We need to pray for South Africa. We need to pray for the upcoming elections. And we got many other churches involved. And it's not just a church word of faith thing. It's a nationwide thing. Wow. And we want to mobilize people to pray. And so it's really easy. Um, if you've got Telegram app on your phone, just search for SA belongs to Jesus. Um, and um, get a part, uh, form a part of it. And every day you will receive three prayers one at six o'clock in the morning, one at 12 o'clock, and one again at six o'clock. And we're just asking you to stand with us, pray with us. Um, it's a nationwide thing. I think we need to pray more. more. Uh, yes. for our country. And what's great, you don't have to be a pastor to actually send a prayer. You can yes. just, you know, sometimes you see a scripture and you're just led by the Spirit and you feel, you know, God reminds you, let's, let's pray for this. And the devil never, will never remind you to pray for something. Absolutely. And then you can post that prayer and, and people can come into agreement. So please go on to Telegram, um, join SA Belongs to Jesus. It's pretty easy. It's not a difficult task to do. And then be part of the movement and to just to create a um, it's a collaborative, but you know there's unity when there's yes. prayer. And what I do specifically, I post it onto my WhatsApp status. I yes. post it That's on my social important. media. And people get, grab a hold of it and they ask me, where did you get this? And I get them to join Telegram That's as wonderful. well. So it's wonderful. We Let's get a lot more people involved in SA Belongs to Jesus. And let us declare yes. SA Belongs to Jesus. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a declaration. Mm-hmm. So this morning we are celebrating. It's a continuous. You know when you've got your a birthday week, I feel like this is a birthday. <laughs> birthday month. <laughs> yes. So Word of Faith has been in um, around for 40 years. Mm. I'm just saying that Word of Faith is c- catching up to my age. 
and you're joining the best you time of your life. Age away. The, not time to live, I can tell them fully about age. But the best time of your life yes. is being over 40. It's yeah. when you're in that season where you've now dealt with these things and you can just go more and uh, move forward. Um, so there's some wonderful pictures. I, I, was, well, I was speaking to Pastor Abby and said, in this 40 years, can you tell us about the branch and how anything that was a highlight from the branch that maybe we, nobody knows about, something that happened that you can recall? Yes, we celebrated uh, 22 years um, in the ministry. And then also we started very unique, uniquely in the sense that we ministered to children first. And through ministering to the children, the parents got saved. And that is how the branch actually started. Wow. So that was a big highlight for me. It's, it's something that's very unique. And for me to see that kids growing up. I mean, in this 23 years, those children have grown up. They've become wonderful adults. And some of them have got married. Some of them have their own kids. And so that has been such a joy to see. Yes. Families evolve and children uh, a new generation coming up serving the Lord. So there's so many wonderful things that has happened. And if you've missed, on a Thursday, I think it started yes. about two weeks two, ago. Three weeks, well, two, three, three weeks, weeks ago. Two, three weeks ago. On a Thursday night, if you go on our YouTube channel, please share our YouTube channel. But if you go on Word of Faith SA, you'll see on a Thursday night that we had what we call, I would call them the historians of Word, Word of Faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should not say that now. <laughs> Loudly. Um, they, they, they spoke about all the wonderful things and, and just they went into that, um, tapped into that history basket yes. and I think photos were shared as well. Yes. But I, I have some photos. I don't know if the media team has got them. Um, I was thinking of my, the 40 years I've been at Word of Faith and so one of my biggest highlights is we had a lot of people that used to come and minister. One mm. of the main uh, people that I recall was at Herald Road was um, Rodney Hart Brown. Wow. And at that, in that time when he came, it was quite an incredible, there's a picture. Wow, now that is, that. that is how church looked. <laughs> that was my first experience, encounter with the Holy Spirit. And that's where I actually yeah. received the Holy Spirit. What happened there? This, this particular picture is quite incredible because he was praying for people. Did it, in Afrikaans, there was chaos. <laughs> But it was good chaos. <laughs> <laughs> the people were laughing, talking tongues. We had people stuck to the floor that you literally couldn't pick them up from the floor. It was so this something. was the overflow? This was the overflow. So wow. it, it was, it, this was in church, and then it just, just went all outside. And all these people, they would stay like this for hours wow. at the end. It was something. It was part of that season. Yes. And I believe God's got seasons. This is not a season that will probably be repeated. But for that time, I believe that was what, that was what the church needed. Impartation. Then, Totally. Yeah. So it was one of, and then there's a picture of um, the choir with Alvin Slaughter. I don't know if they've got that picture. Um, That's so amazing. And we have a, I don't know if it's there, but we had a lot I of... I love in, Alvin Slaughter. Alvin he's he's, he's right in the is, middle there. Wow. I mean, he was a big guy. Yeah, he's a big guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, we had all these guys or um, singers come mm. to our church. We had Alvin Slaughter, Ron Cannoli. We had, um, if I'm correct, Stephen Curtis Chapman, Michael W. Smith, Delirious, we had I think Jesus um, Rebecca Culture. Say, Re uh, not, we not had Carrie Job. Carrie Job. We had Delirious. Um, what did you say? Jesus Culture. culture. So we had these Don Moen. Don Moen. Oh my goodness, I forgot amazing, about Don Moen. Amazing, amazing. The, all these people, they all sang from the stage. So when you stand on the stage, you went, these people were present on the yes. stage. And it was something to have this. So I think we were quite privileged to, um, I was, my mom's saying she's standing in front of, yes, my mom went through his face with her hair as well. <laughs> that I was a season. You. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> Can't miss you there. Um, and then there's a picture of the band. We, we had a brass band. We started a brass band. I'm right there on the oh, side wow, of the Oh, wow, Charlene, team. look at that. And you'll see Warren is, I don't know if Warren is ever watching, but Warren also played the trumpet. We were very proud of our little brass band there. It was that a moment. Was I, don't think I, I don't think I want to do that ever again, but it was hard work. <laughs> I was more stressed of making mistakes. Sure. So that was our brass band. It was quite incredible. And then we, were, we had a lot of concerts. Um, I don't know if Tia has got that picture as well. There's a concert that we did, but I was a, I was a fortune teller. I don't know how they allowed oh, that. What? But I was a fortune teller <laughs> on the stage. 
It's fantastic. And it was seasons we went through. Mm. We we went through seasons where you could do concerts and that was okay and, mm. we, and people came. Yeah. And then there were seasons we could bring these artists and people came. I believe we're in a different season because we have to adapt to the culture. And one mm. thing about Word of Faith, we've adapted. During COVID, we brought in the media side. Yes. And so we're in a different... We started streaming. Sort of and streaming. doing lives. <laughs> All right. We have a video that we would like to show you about the band. And wow. Let's see if we can see this video. I love looking at history pictures. Also I love it. See it's myself wonderful. See myself at how I have become better, I believe. Look at that. Oh, this is the opening. So vibrant. I actually remember the song. <laughs> This is where the church... And everybody had the same hairstyles. Everybody had the same hairstyles <laughs> back in the day. That was a thing. That hairstyle. Oh, and you had to do actions for the song. <laughs> wow. And I can remember how small our stage used to be. Yes. It was we great. had to expand it because of the many productions we had. And you, you can see that I can remember the great Oh, this is also incredible Pastor Jimmy with a mayor. And that was breaking ground. Yes. Breaking ground. So it was quite incredible. Um, I think when the structure went off, I, 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 can't, I think people were not sure what was happening. Because sure. this was the first biggest big church, big church built yeah. in Port Elizabeth. Pastor Jimmy really had a vision to push the boundaries. Look at that baptismal font there. That was, a, you know, when you plan, you plan right. And it was placed. There's Pastor, hey, Pastor Kalyu. Kalyu. I actually man. remember this day because I was there. I recall Marshall it quite Lee. well. And it seemed as if it was just the roof and no a few other things. <laughs> Not a lot. And the people came. It's amazing. The people came. That was it. That's why I say, and look at it now. Why don't we put a, a recent picture? Oh, I, remember. See, I remember the church like that. Yes. And the youth used to sit on the one side. Pastor Mariana used to look at us from that angle because the youth used to sit on the other side. And if we didn't listen, oh, the concerts It's all the productions. Oh, my God. This is Glory in the Fire. And so many people the, got saved, eh? Yes, they came. And did Dorothy. And there's Pastor Denver. Yes, I see Pastor Denver in there. Oh, I remember this. We had this con these concerts we had. Were quite, and that, oh, that's King Kellerman. I think that's a main choir. Like if they think they went on a men's <laughs> camp, then they had to sing. Romeo, I saw their pastor. Ronnie Sampson. Oh, there's that sure. picture. If you go to these pictures, it's incredible to see. God has done so much for so all of us. Things, yes. Imparted so many things. As I can see some of the faces and I see some of them here today. And you it's see just the, amazing what God has done. There's your parents. I know, right? <laughs> It's the hairstyle. <laughs> I just Pastor want to say, D. I, Pastor D. Oh, oh my goodness, God, this my husband. <laughs> Pastor Frederick. That's the staff at one point. I see Desmond there. Oh my goodness. Oh, Pastor Jimmy. I think this is such a this way also where they do Look at that. Look at the church building now. The world gives you happiness for a little season. Get to the world and I give you a victory and now and then. But Jesus Christ never change it. Yes. He's the same Amen. yet today, today and forever. He that won the battle 2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary is still the victor tonight. And in a very short while, he said he's coming back on the clouds of the sky to meet those that have put their trust in him. And that will be the ultimate victory. Oh, wow. Sure. Listen, um, Pastor Abby, if there was ever, when you see things like that, you always see how, how you see how the seasons change, mm. and we are on a new season, and new things are happening, and it's exciting to see how we are moving with the times, mm. but not with the times where the world is dictating yes. what God is saying, Absolutely. and what I see is how we are coming together, there's prayer groups, there's connect groups, we are, we are going back to what God said, well, if you think of the early church, how we connected in yes. the homes, we're definitely doing what God has called us to do.
Just before we end, we just need to remind everybody after church what is happening, because I know the branch yes. is coming, so it's going to be a big day and today. And that's the reason why I'm here today, because all the branch churches are coming together. Five Ways, the branch, wow. Boys and Spark, and Galvindale churches are coming together at 10 o'clock. And after 10 o'clock, we are having a big celebration. We are having a bring and bry, and there's going to be entertainment for the children. There's going to be food trucks. Lovely. There's going to be just wonderful fellowship and coming together in celebrating God's goodness and what He's done for us. So if you are still at home and you're listening to the rain, don't let it let you stay at home. Come to church. You need to yes. be in the house of the Lord. Um, and then lastly, before we end, on Friday, Good Friday, who is coming? We've got a special speaker coming on Good Friday. It's March, and we are having um, Easter this at the end of the month. On the 29th of March, we are having a special speaker. Heinz Winkler will this be with exciting. us. Heinz Winkler. And so, he so was... we are so excited about that. And so we can't wait to see him. So before we, I know the band is ready, and I think I'm excited to get into the house of the Lord. Let's just pray. Abby, yeah. can you pray for us, please? Yes. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you this morning. I thank you for your anointing in this place. I thank you, Lord, as we worship you, that you will abide in our places. Lord, we lift you up and we thank you for 40 years of faithfulness. We give you all the thanks and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. Over to the band. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning on this awesome, awesome occasion. Today we celebrate 40 years of God's faithfulness. Hallelujah! 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 I think the moment it just soaks in, you realize what 40 years of faithfulness really, really means. And I want to read the scripture as we open up this morning and get ready to praise Him for His goodness. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruct destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand side, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the, of the evil. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, no evil shall come near you, shall be allowed to befall you. No plague shall come near your tent, for He will command His angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Hallelujah. Word of faith, that's our testimony this morning, that we abide in the shadow of the Most High God. And this morning, our hearts are so filled with, with, with gratitude that we just want to come and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Say one ring into the night, wanting a place to hide the weary soul. This bag of bones. Come on, I tried. Said I tried with all my mind, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A bag of bones. And just when I ran out of the road, I met a man I didn't know, and he told me. Change my name forever free. I'm not the same. 
get up, get up, get up, get up out of that way. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that way. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that. Come on, say get up, get up, get up, get up out of that way. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that way. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that way. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that way. grateful for what you've done for us.
praise cause you rolled and defeated the grave I praise cause you're faithful praise cause you're true praise cause there's nobody greater than you sing I praise cause you're sovereign praise cause you reign praise cause you rose and defeated the grave I praise cause you're faithful praise cause you're true praise cause there's nobody greater I praise God you stop it. Praise God you reign. Praise God you rose and defeated the grave. I praise God you faithful. Praise God you true. Praise God there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. the rock that we could stand on oh God through the valley not just in the valley but through the valley back up to mountaintop experiences you have been our firm foundation and we give you praise glory and honor
fail He never has and he won't stop now He'll never fail How firm foundation Thank you for your goodness and your faith
Hallelujah. Just think about, let's just take one minute and say thank you to God. It's been 40 years, maybe in your life it's been longer, but just say thank you God for your faithfulness. We give you all the glory and all the praise. Come and lift up your hands and just say, God, thank you for your faithfulness. If it wasn't for you, where would I be today, oh God? You took me from the mighty clay. You lifted me up. Oh God, when people said I would not make it, here I am standing today because you are faithful. Oh God, you are faithful. You are faithful. We honor you, oh God. Great is your faithfulness through the years. We give you glory. And now, Holy Spirit, we welcome you into this place. Thank you that you've been here from the very first song. Thank you that you're going to touch people, save people, deliver people, set people free. Thank you that you're breaking down walls and fences and that you're penetrating hearts. Thank you for your love and your faithfulness to the years. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah. And everyone that believes that, shout Amen. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. Amen. Before you have a seat, just high five about three people around you. Say it's lovely to see you. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Just greet your neighbors. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you blessed to be here this morning? You know, my name is Pastor Frederick Blichnot, and if you don't, uh, know me, you know, normally we have, we've, we, we closed, I'm um, uh, the pastor of the branch church, and uh, we closed the church this, this morning because we're all coming through, it's the 40th, you see every 40 years we close the church here, <laughs> to come through here and we're going to have a celebration at the 10 o'clock service, so if you can make it, so I was, I was excited to have a little bit of a sleep in, because there's no 8 o'clock service, I was going to come, and then I find myself here at the 8 o'clock service, Amen. But I want to declare it's better to be in the presence of God than to be sleep in. I, I'm not getting amens. Uh, come on, please, people. It's better to be in the house of the Lord than any sleep in. Amen? I'm excited because of the band as well. You, the band you see, if you don't know, that this is a combination of all our branch churches, the band here, and even at 10 o'clock. So let's give them a hand. I thought they did very, very well. Awesome. And then I'm also excited because it's a special person's, other than the church, it's a special person's birthday today. The reason why this person is special is because of my sister, Madge. Happy birthday, amen. Happy birthday to you. And then I'm also excited because at this church, we've got a coffee shop called Being Redeemed. Did you see it on the left-hand side? Did you smell it when you came in? Uh, I believe it's some of the best coffee not some of the, uh, the best coffee uh, in Port Elizabeth. Amen? Amen. And uh, so, but we're also generous like that, especially it's our birthday as well, although we do it every week. Um, if there's, um, we give a cup of free coffee away to every single person that's here for the very first time. So you're going to get a voucher, you're going to fill in that voucher, and you're going to hand it in. And uh, it's, I, I believe it's not only coffee, it's also uh, what do you call these things? Slushy and, yeah, slushy and all those things, yeah, that you want. So if there's anybody here for the first time and you, 
you really want that coffee, pull, just put up your hand it's for the first time. I see that hand over there. Anybody else? Just put up your hands. There's another hand. Awesome, awesome. Hallelujah. And I'm also excited to see my friend uh, Barry here. And, uh, hello, 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 Barry. I'm going to get you a coffee after service. Amen. So, hallelujah. <laughs> Bless you. Amen. I want to talk about the offering this morning. I'm going to go straight to Deuteronomy 15, verse 4 and 6, because I'm going to share with you the heart of God. Does everybody know what the heart of God is? It's found in the scripture here. Deuteronomy 15 from verse 4, I'm going to read till verse 6. There should be no poor among you. Everybody say, there should be no poor amongst us. For the Lord your God will greatly bless you in the land he is giving you as a special possession. You will receive this blessing if you are careful to obey all the commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today. So the heart of God is that there be no poor amongst us. Especially in the land he was going to, especially speaking about the Israelites here, especially in the land where he was going, his heart was that none of you should be poor. Amen? Now, Jesus did say to his disciples, the poor will always be amongst us. And I believe, especially if you are not serving Jesus. But if you are served, God, Jesus in your heart, there's something on the inside that starts stirring inside of you. Because it's called the blessing. Amen? It's inside of you and you start stirring. And, and there should be in all of us. Now, imagine this. Imagine this. That all of us here, Let's talk about our community, our church community, Word of Faith Church community. Imagine there's no poor person amongst us. Think about that a little bit. Let that sink in. Do you guys think that's possible? It is. Some of you are very unsure about it. You know. But if you have Jesus Christ inside of you, suddenly there's a mindset change. And if we have the mind of God here that says there should be no poor amongst you, Remember in Acts when they shared everything and there was nobody that had lack? So in the same way, there should be no poor amongst you. I want to take you to another scripture because this is how that is possible. Luke 8, verse 2 and 3. Let's read that quickly. Say, along with some woman who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, talking about Mary, among them were Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. Everybody say Joanna. I, I don't know if somebody's name is Joanna. Yeah. The wife of Chusa. Give me hope, Joanna. Yeah. <laughs> the wife of Chusa. Or, yeah. Kusa or Chusa. Herod's business manager. So I was thinking, who is that in today's? Who would be the king's business manager? It would be sorry, the city manager. No? The Guptas. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let's just say the city manager's wife was amongst them, right? Uh, and then there was also Susanna, or Sus Susanna, if we were American. Say Susanna. And Susanna. And many others who were contributing from their own resources to support Jesus and his disciples. That was quite profound when I... So everybody say Joanna. And everybody say Susanna. <laughs> It rhymes, Joanna and Susanna. Amen. Those, I'm praying that some Joannas and some Su Su Susannas and Susannas be raised up, amen, in order that there will be no poor people amongst us. That's the heart of God. And so, uh, in the spirit of this day today, it's a 40th celebration, that we cannot make it on our own. We need people to help us in the ministry. And some people have over the years helped us greatly. And you guys have been faithful even through COVID. There was a time in COVID where we blessed so many. I think it was we spent so much money. We fed so many people. And I think in the, we need to say thank you to God for the 40 years that we could be a blessing in our society, in our communities, and a blessing among. So I believe that God is going to raise up more Joanna's. And more Susanas. You know, I believe that. I really do. Maybe it's some more Madges. 
Amen. <laughs> Amen. That God is going to raise up to be a blessing so that we can make sure that everybody is blessed in our city. So let's, let's take up the offering. Let's, uh, let's, let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of giving. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to bless us so much that we can put an end to the poor in our church, in amongst our community. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for your blessings. And we thank you for everything we have. We give you honor and we thank you for this 40 years of blessing. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Guys, you can go ahead, ushers, and take up the offering. Bless you. Good morning, moms and dads. Lauren from Kingdom Kids. This morning is obviously a very exciting morning because we're celebrating the 40th birthday of the church in Kingdom Kids. So we have a jumping castle and there's going to be lots of fun activities. But we will also be learning about how Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus from the dead. So the children will learn that Jesus had power over death life and death this morning. And the scripture is still Isaiah 53, verse 3, and they will be doing that in a dance form. And next week, we're still having our, our meeting for our little praise and worship team. If there's any kids in the building, don't miss out on the fun that's happening over there. It's going to be way more fun that side. Thank you. Amen. Well, welcome, everybody, on this very, very very auspicious occasion, 40 years in, in the Lord's um, field working together. Um, we, of course, going to be doing our really um, big celebration at the 10 o'clock service. Um, we were trying to plan for how many people are coming to the 10 o'clock service, and the honest answer is we have no idea. So, um, but it's going to be big, it's going to be exciting, but... Um, we very, uh, it's a privilege to preach to you on the 40th birthday. Actually, to be honest, our 40th birthday was on the 28th of February. Um, we started in 1984. And, um, and it, was, it was such an auspicious occasion that we, we can't find any photos that were taken there. Incidentally, while, I, while, while I'm thinking about it, please, if we, we want to make as big a splash as possible. Please take out your phones and share the link. We are live on YouTube and Facebook. Put it in your WhatsApp status. Let's, get, let's, let's tell the world what Jesus has done for Word of Faith. So, to be honest, let's get getting... And I don't know how many of you remember what the Feather Market Hall looked like before they beautifully redid it. It was terrible. It was really, really, really run down. And that was where we had the first meeting of Word of Faith Christian Center. We actually had a gospel singing group um, from America whose names I cannot recall. Um, and um, they, they were invited to one church, and then, of course, we were kicked out. And so they ended up singing at another church, just the same people. And um, they, it was quite a, to be honest, it was, it, you would think that a church would start in victory and excitement, but to be honest, what we had been through, it had been very, very hard. Um, our denomination had thrown us out and taken everything from us because they didn't want us to have the move of the Spirit, they didn't want us to have multi, a multiracial church. Um, we can't prove it, but I think there was a bit of interference from the government at that time. And, and, and we had been all over the newspapers as the, as the bad, bad guys in town. In fact, and that was when newspapers dominated news. Now we have a lot of news on the internet, but back then... Every, what was on the signposts in the city was what, was what happened, you know. And so they, they, they attacked us and they called us all kinds of names. And so, and you, you ask, well, why did this happen? Why, why did, 
Why did we end up in the situation that we, that we ended ourselves up in? And I want to read to you two scriptures. The first is in Exodus 1 verse 22, and it says, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, Throw every newborn Hebrew into the Nile River, but, that, but you may let the girls live. If you start to think about how terribly, ridiculously, horribly cruel that act is, Papa, I, I always, I often say to my people, by the way, happy birthday, Madge. Um, I often say to my people, we, we, and we, when we're writing outlines, I say we read the Bible with organ music, you know, and we say, oh, they killed the babies, and, and it doesn't sink in how terrible this is. Imagine giving birth and the baby being snatched away from you and being thrown into the Nile. This is not, this happened to real people. This wasn't, oh, this was, and then, and then, um, and then Matthew 2 verse 16, Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men, men had outwitted him. And he sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. In today's, in today's um, environment, this would make headline news around the world. We, we've seen the, the outcries that Micon is check off. Um, sorry, my mic is going on and off like crazy. Um, okay. Let's see how it goes. Is it on? Okay. Let's see. Sorry, we have a mic that interferes with my frequency of this mic. We've got all kinds of frequencies going on. But anyway, let's see. is it going on and off? Okay. Let's go over to this one. So, um, to genocide. <laughs> um, this we've seen the outcry that happened in Palestine and Israel with with the destruction of um, of uh, and, and the destruction and death that's happened both on the se September seventh um, of October and after that. These these this happened to real people. Now what? Why would humans, just out of the blue, suddenly become so cruel? And I'm going to answer that shortly, but I just quickly want to take you through um, the travails that we went through. Because just like in both those cases, what God was trying to, what Satan was trying to do, the evil one was trying to do, was cut off a move of God, cut off what God's doing. And so... We see there, um, there's some pictures there, um, bottom, bottom right, yeah, your bottom right is St. Columbus Church, now called the Gap Presbyterian Church, and we used to meet there after their church because we had nowhere to go. Bottom left is a tent that we put up and had some services in. Top left and right is the Crispin Hall. Now, I don't know if you guys know where the Crispin Hall is. If you come down Mount Road, at the circle, there's a big building on your left. And that used to be where everybody had their wedding receptions and parties. And every Sunday afternoon, we used to have to go and clean that hall up before we could have church on Sunday night. Um, the filth and the stench was just horrific because they would party so who knows what, shut the doors and walk away, and then it was up to us to clean the building. And, and we paid rent for that. Um, to, to this day, I absolutely hate the smell of beer because of that. It's, it's a disgusting smell to me because of that. I hate beer, the, the smell of beer, because we spent our afternoons cleaning up after people had slopped beer all over the floors, and it was disgusting. And so, and, and then the Lord helped us 
and we started to build a church. I don't know if you've seen that building opposite the Italian club in Harold Road, Charlotte. That my dad built, this, 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 this church built. Um, you can see some of the photos. Incidentally, bottom, bottom right, while, while we were looking, while we were trying to build a building, we set up a tent in the back of Pastor Kalyu's um, garden, and that we used for our youth. So we used to run a, because we had nothing. Satan was doing everything in his power to kill off our church. Um, and then, and then the Lord, after about uh, what, 18 months, two years, we were able to build that building. There's a shot of some of the crowd in Harold Road, Charlotte. And then, of course, I thought I'd put a, there was the, there, there was, uh, you can see the building in the background. For those of you who still remember Johan Yebe, I don't know if there's anyone here who does. He's the guy batting. Um, I couldn't really recognize the other kids, but anyway. Um, and we were able to build that building. And then um, eventually we were able to build here. Yeah. And the Lord in 1991 gave us this building. You see, I thought we'd, we'd put Pastor Denver in. He's the first guy I've ever seen who's done bunny ears behind his own head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he fully grasped that it's supposed to be like an insult or something like that. I see a, I, I, I see a, door, um, a sister doing it to a brother um, in the audience. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's meant to, it's, I don't know, you were meant to like, does anyone know what it meant? <laughs> Not that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, but when people did it behind Yes, like Michaela's having now. <laughs> um, I don't know. It was, anyway, it's this thing that people did in the 80s and 90s. Uh, you know, retro. But um, the point is, is that, is, is that we, although it's been a real privilege to work in, in the field of the Lord here at Word of Faith, there have been lots and lots of battles just like they were in biblical times. Now, why? Who's behind these battles? And I want to take you to Daniel 10, verse 20. And, um, and uh, uh, the angel of the Lord replies to Daniel, and he says, Do you know why I've come? Soon I must return to fight against the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia, and after that the spirit prince of the kingdom of Greece will come. So, the angel of the Lord from God was having to, having to, was at war with these spirit princes that were over different nations, the spirit prince of Greece and the spirit prince of, of Persia. Who knows where Persia is today? What do they call Persia? It's Iran. Iran. Who? What? Iran. Iran is... Um, is one of the e most evil nations in the world. There's a strong church there, despite remarkable persecution. But the, the rulers of Iran or Persia are still evil. They're still um, sending out... Um, uh, they're, they're still trying to kill, steal, and destroy. In fact, um, the October the 7th massacre was sponsored by Iran. The spirit prince of Iran was behind that massacre. So this is, this is not something that's in the history books. This is happening right now. These demon spirits, these princes are wanting to kill, steal, and destroy. So how did they end up in charge of these nations? So what happened was, and I'll read it to you, Deut Deuteronomy um, 32 verse 8, when the Most High assigned lands to the nations... He divided up the human race. He established the boundaries of the peoples according to the number in his heavenly court. And so we see that at the Tower of Babel, the human race utterly, completely, and totally repudiated God. They, the whole point of the Tower of Babel was, 
was to repudiate and reject God. And so God handed over these nations to these spirit princes. And some of them, like Michael, continued to work in obedience to God, but many of them, the, the, power, the power, they, they rebelled against God and tried to destroy and, and, and exploit the nations that they were over. And they are at constant war with God. So I want to take you to a, a psalm that, that describes the judgment of these spirit princes. So before we get there, I want to point out that here in South Africa, I believe there's a spirit prince over South Africa. There may be even spirit princes over different peoples in South Africa. I don't know. But the bottom line is, is that there are spirit princes that are wanting to destroy our nation, that want to fight against what God is doing. They want to prevent the church from going forward. Why? I'll show you soon. But let's read. So God presides over heaven's court. So he calls them in and he pronounces judgment on the heavenly beings, these spirit princes. How long will you hand down unjust decisions by favoring the wicked? Interlude or seller. Think about that. It means give justice to the poor and the orphan. Uphold the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. Now, why is God telling them to do this? Is because they're not giving justice to the poor and the orphans, and they're not upholding the rights of the oppressed and the destitute. So, does God want people poor, as Pastor Frederick so powerfully preached with the offering? No, he does not want people poor. But these spirit princes oppress our people and keep them in poverty. It's, it's a, a massive effort, to be honest, to break out of poverty. Why? Because the, the, the principalities and powers want to keep people oppressed. And God's saying, stop it. Stop holding people behind. Stop oppressing people. Stop keeping them in poverty. Stop keeping them in hunger and starvation. Bring justice. Because God wants that justice in our land and in lands around the world. And he says, rescue. He tells them, rescue the poor and the helpless. Deliver them from the grasp of, of evil people. But these oppressors know nothing. They are so ignorant. These oppressors, these spirit princes continue in the way that they are. And we, we see the pattern of their work here in South Africa. You only have to drive past a squatter camp to see that there are supernatural powers, principalities and powers that are fighting to keep our land poor and held captive by the evil one. Why? Because they, they want to foment revolution. They want to foment violence. They want to foment suffering. They want to kill, steal, and destroy because that's the mandate that, mandate that they've taken. And so the, the, the psalmist says they wander about in darkness while the whole world is shaken to the core. And then, and, and we see that. Listen, if you want an illustrated sermon, switch on your news app right now and you will see that the whole world is shaken to a core. Am I right? In my lifetime, they, I mean, it's been 30 years yeah, yeah, 30 years since anyone's ma mentioned nuclear war. Now they're talking about it all the time. They're threatening each other. The earth is being shaken to a core. Who is it? It's these spirit princes that want to kill, steal, and destroy. I've preached to you about these spirit princes and the power. Uh, 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 in fact, the, the heads of the gangs that are destroying ESCOM are actually called... Names that, that fit with spirit prince, the spirit princes, these principalities and powers. Satan is trying to destroy not just our nation, but any, every other. I, you, you look at, uh, everyone says, oh, the UK. The UK ha is in an almost insoluble debt position. So is um, America. Those spirit princes have used debt to drive nations into corners. Ah. 
we're not in such a bad debt position because everyone says, whoa, we're not loaning to those oaks. <laughs> so we can't, we only <laughs> so we only had 75% debt to GDP ratio. They had 133% or something. So the and the point but the point is is these spirit princes are trying to destroy nations. And so and so God says to them, I say you are gods, you're all children of the Most High. I've made you, but you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler. Now, I want you to I want to read that to you because this is the key for what I'm trying to say. But you will you you are gods, you are like children of the Most High, but you will die like mere mortals and fall like every other ruler. Now there's going to be a come a time, a day of the Lord, where Jesus returns. And at that point, these spirit princes will face judgment and they will die. It will be over for them. But until that judgment comes, they, they are still free to wreak destruction on the earth. So let's think about this. If you are facing obliteration, what is, what is your incentive? What is it that you would do? If you know that at a point something will, when, uh, someone will return and then it's over for you, what are you going to do? You are going to fight to push that event out as far further and further and further. Why? Because you want to, you don't want the punishment to come. And so what are these, what is the, if, if Jesus' return, as I'll show you, is the, is the trigger for their punishment, what do you think they're busy doing right now? They're trying to prevent the return of Jesus Christ. And how do you do it better than fighting churches that are winning people for Jesus and establishing the kingdom of God. And so these spirit princes are at war with each of us. Why? Because if they can succeed in the war, they can extend their lives. So when is Jesus coming? I don't know, but these spirit princes are trying to delay it as much as they possibly can to prevent the return of Jesus Christ. It's why Christianity right now is the most persecuted religion on the planet of earth. Why? Because everywhere these spirit princes are fighting the establishment of the, the, the presence, the kingdom of God. They're trying to prevent it. And so in 1984, when Word of Faith established a church, a, a prophetic voice to our city, our nation, and our continent, what did they do? They did everything in their power to destroy us. Because as we fulfill our mandate, we bring the return of Jesus Christ closer. And so what do they do? They try and kill us. They try to kill us at birth. They try to kill us off. Why? Because we bring the kingdom of God here. And so these spirit princes are at war with you, whether you like it or not. So, and, and so... What is the opposite of what these spirit princes are, going, are doing? Let's look at Daniel 7, verse 13 to 14. And it says, As my vision continued that night, I saw someone like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient one and was led into his presence. This is a, a vision of Jesus returning to heaven after his ascension here, here on earth. Because he left in the clouds. And now he's being received in heaven on those same clouds. And he was given authority and honor and sovereignty over all the nations of the world. So that the people of every race and nation and language should obey him. His rule is eternal. It will never end. His kingdom will never be destroyed. So what happened was when Jesus ascended, the kingdom of God was inaugurated. A kingdom of God that will never end. Is the kingdom of God in charge in our city, in our nation, in our country, in our world? No, but it is being progressively established until the time comes when Jesus will return. And so 
What are they fighting? They're fighting the kingdom of God that was established. Not What's more is that the authority over the nations that God had given them was withdrawn on the cross. It says that in, in, Paul teaches us that the, the, the rules, the, the, the power that they had, that these principalities and powers had, was stripped, the authority. But at the same time, their power, their ability to fight that is still there. So you, what you need to understand is that the legal right to control the nations is gone. But physically and effectively, and if any of you are, 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 are lawyers, you'll know what I mean when I say de facto. In fact, many of them still control the nations that they no longer have a legitimate claim to. And so, what are they doing? They're fighting the church. They're fighting the kingdom of God. Why? Because if the kingdom of God becomes properly established, Jesus will return. And their end has come. And so, they are at war with us. At war with those who are part of the kingdom of God. And so, we know that Jesus... So, is the kingdom of God here, here now? Yes. Yes. But it's now, but not yet. So when will we see the fullness of the kingdom of God? It's when Jesus comes a second time. And we see that in Mark um, 13, verse 26 to 27. It says, Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory. And he will send out his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the earth. From the furthest ends of the earth and the heaven. Now, aren't you glad that Kabecha is mentioned in Scripture? Let me ask you from Jerusalem, what is the furthest end south? There. So, we have a Scripture that says that Jesus is going to come fetch us back because we're the furthest end of the earth. Is Jesus coming to fetch you from Kabeche? Yes. Careful if you move further north. <laughs> In fact, Jesus, Jesus mentioned us when he said, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Hallelujah. Because after us, it's just penguins. And so... So whenever you read uttermost part of the earth, you must say, hallelujah, that's me. <laughs> but, the, but Jesus is going to return and gather his kingdom together. And so, and so what is Jesus waiting for? Why is Jesus not returning yet? Let's look at Romans 11.25. I want you to understand this mystery, dear brothers and sisters, so that you will not feel proud about yourselves. Some of the people of Israel have heard, have hard hearts, but this will last only until the number of Gentiles, the full number of Gentiles comes to Christ. So there is, there is a full number of Gentiles that have to come to Jesus before the end comes. So if you're a smart prince of, of Persia or prince of Greece or prince of South Africa, what are you fighting to do to stop the fullness of the Gentiles? Because there is some number or amount that the father wants to bring into his family before the end comes. So literally in every little church there is a war going on to prevent the fullness of the Gentiles. There is a war here at Word of Faith. The spirit princes have to stop us bringing the fullness of the Gentiles here in Kabecha. Why? Because if we do it and every other church around the world does it, it's the end. So how do we bring an end to the suffering? How do we usher the fullness of the kingdom of God in? We bring in 
the fullness of the Gentiles. What is a Gentile? For those of you who don't know, it was the word for non-Jew. So I don't know if there are any Jewish people in this congregation right now or watching, but if, if you are not Jewish, then you are a Gentile. And when the fullness of the non-Jews, when the full harvest has been brought in, what happens to these spirit princes? They die. And so they've devoted themselves for 2,000 years to prevent the fullness of the Gentiles. We're at a war over souls. We're at a war. We are at a war over whether the fullness of the Gentiles comes in or not. And the longer that continues, the longer the suffering and destruction continues. I think one of the reasons why we, we let's be honest, for the last four years now, the world has been as unstable as it's been in my lifetime. And I believe it's because the church is increasingly starting to succeed in bringing in the fullness of the Gentiles. There have been moves in Argentina and South America. There are moves in, in China. There are moves across Asia. There's a move in Africa of people coming to salvation. And these, these principalities and powers are in fear that the end is close. And they will do everything in their power to delay that. And so, how do we fight these, these, these spirit princes? Revelation 12 verse 11, and it says, They have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Jesus started, when he invited his disciples, he said, come and see. And then later he said, come and die. It's so our 40th anniversary, and we may as well get to the truth. <laughs> but we are in a war to bring in the fullness of the Gentiles, which will trigger the return of Jesus Christ. He will come on the clouds and gather us away, especially from Kabecha. We know he's coming for us. And these spirit princes are causing greater and greater instability in our earth to try and prevent the return of Jesus Christ. We've seen what the church in, has happened to the church in Ukraine. Powerful, strong church full of Jesus. Satan is, has brought destruction there. So, what am I yet to say? In Ephesians 6, verse 11 to 13, it says, A final word, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor that you may be able to stand firm against the strategies of the devil. This is why you need the armor of God, because the devil has a strategy to kill, steal, and destroy from you. If you're a child of God, he is going out of his way. He's doing everything in his power to prevent you from serving the Lord. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. These are the spirit princes I've been telling you about. Against mighty powers in the dark world and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. They are arrayed against the, the kingdom of God. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so that you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be st still be standing firm. And so I want to say to you that Satan is doing everything in his power to keep you away from church. Keep you away from being part of a connect group. Keep you away from joining a connect group. Keep you away from fellowshipping and growing and changing. Everything he can do. Why? Because... He doesn't know what the fullness of the Gentiles is. He doesn't know how many people it has to be. But when it comes, Jesus, there will be a move among the Jewish people, and then Jesus will return, and that's it. And so he, he knows he's coming to the end of his life. 
which is why he's fighting harder and harder and harder to prevent it. But the kingdom of God is, is winning. He tried to kill us off here at Word of Faith 40 years ago and a few times since then. But um, we're here to celebrate the victory. The princes may have tried to shut us down, but we are not prepared to do so. We are here standing our ground. Satan, we've got the full armor of God. You can try and shoot fiery arrows at us. You can try and chase us. You can try and intimidate us. You can try and scare us. But we are not moving. We are part of the kingdom of God. We're not moving. Kabecha, Nelson Mandela Bay is our land. We're standing on it. The kingdom of God is going to be established. We won't back down. And, and if there's a story of a church that won't back down, it's word of faith. When Satan, Satan has tried every trick in the book to try and destroy us. But we've mostly been able to maintain the unity which is the key. Which is the key to fight off the devil. And so, here we are 40 years on. Is word of faith, Pastor Jimmy Crompton, if ever there was a figure that, and Pastor Mariana, if, if ever there was a figure that dominated the church, it's Pastor Jimmy. He had a remarkable personality. He was as bold as a lion. But he's, he's gone to receive his reward. Has word of faith gone away? No. So word of faith is not Jimmy Crompton. It's certainly not Richard Crompton. Why? Because the prophetic calling and mandate that God has put on this house will survive me. You know, maybe I'll go up in it, maybe I won't, but I'm not word of faith. Word of faith is the calling that God and the mantle that God has put on this house, this group of people. When Pastor Denver, when Pastor Denver left to, for Tanzania, people were like, oh, what's going to happen? Well, we got stronger. When Pastor Jimmy passed away, what happened? We got stronger. Why? Because we, our faith is not in a man or a woman. Our faith is in Jesus Christ. So we were praying for the... Um, we were praying beforehand for the, the broadcast that it'd go well. And while I was, they asked me to pray, I guess, because it's 40 years. And I'm one of the few people that can remember it. <laughs> we were here the whole way. In fact, when we were doing these interviews, they were saying, oh, what about that person? I say, yeah, but they only arrived in 1988. <laughs> you know, I'm a lifer. So... So everyone arrived after me other than, than, other than Auntie Ethel. So what, I, so what I'm saying here is that God has given us a calling here at Word of Faith to fulfill. The spirit princes of our nations have fought us and they've fought us hard. But if Word, if word of Faith is not a man... If it's not a person, what is word of faith? And I believe there's three things that stand out. First of all, the willingness and the willingness to move with the Holy Spirit. That's a photo of Rodney Howard Brown ministering in our church. That's Pastor Jimmy lying on the, on the stage out under the Holy Spirit. When no one else wanted Rodney Howard Brown in 1989, we called him and said, come and preach for us. And from there, the doors opened around the world. So when, no, when everyone else was too scared of the move of the Holy Spirit, word of faith stood out. And I think that we can see by that, the, the move of the Spirit, 
I, I didn't know about Carrie Job, but Carrie Job said she had spent 20 minutes after the concert here on this stage saying she had never, on her knees in the green room, saying she had never, ever experienced the presence of the Lord like she did here. Um, Delirious, for some of you who don't know, massive band. They came and told us they were the, that they had the greatest concert of their careers here, and they begged us to let them come back. Um, parachute band also, Don Moen, so, Israel Houghton, I don't know if you remember him, he, we were on his bucket list to come and do a concert here because he, he came up under Kim Clement. And so Kim Clement would tell him stories of what was happening in this church. Um, the list goes on and on. Jonathan Shuttlesworth never prophesied like he prophesied here. Why is that? It's because us, not me, us, we're willing to move in the Holy Spirit. We've got the courage. We're not self-conscious, although some of you could move a bit closer to the front. Please, that's not a joke. That's actually a genuine request. But we, we are determined to continue to move in the Holy Spirit. During the SA Belongs to Jesus prayer meeting, especially on the Tuesday, I've seldom seen the presence of the, felt the presence of the Lord. I'd actually forgotten about it, if you can cope. But we had a soaking session a year, a year and a half ago, about a year ago, where the awe of God entered this room. And no one sang it other than people from the audience would start a song. But basically it was quiet for about an hour with the very presence of the Lord filling this room. I'd, I'd heard about the fear of the Lord and what does that mean? But actually, from now on, I'm going to call it the awe of the Lord because I experienced it that night. It's the willingness to allow the Holy Spirit to manifest in a real way. Another thing is the boldness. So, do you know that there, there are one or two churches that are thriving after COVID, but most churches are way down on what they were before. But you know what we did in the last staff meeting before they locked us down? And we had, didn't really know what to do. We'd record, we recorded some messages, and then from there the Lord guided us. But we set ourselves a goal that we would be bigger coming out of lockdown than going in. Most people were saying, well, will we survive lockdown? But we set us, and, and who, who does something that stupid? It's people who have boldness, and boldness is written into the DNA of Word of Faith. If you're part of Word of Faith, you have boldness. You just need to access it. What is boldness? It is extreme faith <laughs> and a, a, a courage to do what God's told you to do, a courage to believe that God will bless you, a courage to believe that in your situation God will intervene. And that's, what, that's a key part of, what, of our DNA, move of the Holy Spirit and boldness. And to, do you know that according to most metrics, we are either bigger or significantly bigger than when we went into lockdown. Do you know that we didn't have an 8 o'clock service before lockdown? You, our 10 o'clock service is even much bigger than this. And our branch churches are filled up. Why? And our connect groups are twice as big as they were before lockdown. It takes crazy, it's craziness to believe that God can intervene. That's that's part of what our mandate is. And then the last thing is that we have a commitment to see our city transformed and changed. In 1984, when everyone said, switch off the lights, send the dolphins out, it's over, we declared P belongs to Jesus. We have branched out into every part of our city. If you can look on the map, you can see our churches all over the city. 
that we work with or have planted out. You can see our connect groups across. There's Pastor Kenny who works with us. He, when he, he started working with us three years ago, he had, he, he had a church of about 150. He's now built a church twice as big or three, more, than, more than twice as big. And he's now gone to double sessions. Why? Because he's implemented our connect group system. When I tell other pastors about our connect group system, they just laugh at me. They think it's crazy. But do you know what? It's transforming people's lives. That's our goal. Does it look crazy? Well, we're bold here at Word of Faith, so we don't care <laughs> what you guys think, what, what people think. We are bold. And that probably makes us righteous because the righteous are bold as a lion. And our commitment to our city, we want to see the people of P.E. fill in. P.E. of Trebecha, of, people of Nelson Bandela Bay, fill the churches, not our, just our church, but the churches of P.E. Because there's a million people going to hell within 50 kilometers of us. And word of faith has the boldness to do something about it. And so, Year after 40 years, we've seen lots of trials, we've seen lots of fights, we've seen wars, but those spirit princes cannot win because greater than he that is in us than he that is in the world. We're not going to allow these spirit princes to stop the church of Jesus Christ here at Word of Faith. We're going forward, we're going forward with the move of the Holy Spirit, we're going forward with boldness. We're going to win our city for Jesus and we're going to get a firehouse on every street. Who prays that? A bold church. A church that believes in a big God that's far bigger, more powerful than any spirit prince that is trying to prevent, basically trying to, to, to prolong their lives. They're fighting like crazy, but greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We are not backing down. Word of faith is taking a stand. And so what I want to do is I want to take, I want to give you an opportunity to make a commitment. I'm not going to ask you to come up for salvation. If you're not saved, come and talk to us. If you're not a part of the family of God, come and talk to us. But I would like those who God has spoken to through this message, I would like those who God has moved in their heart and they want to say, I want to take a stand. I'm not backing down. We are going to get a firehouse on every street. We're going to see our city transformed. We're going to get to the fullness of the Gentiles and we're going to see the return of Jesus Christ. I want you to say, uh, everyone bow their heads and only those who God's speaking to you, I want you to stand because I want to pray for you. Thank you, Lord. If you want to take a stand, if you want to say, I'm not backing down, I'm part Good morning and welcome, and um, it's so wonderful that you've joined us today on this very special occasion, on us just celebrating 40 years of God's faithfulness and God's blessing, and you know, I've said it here before, and I just thought again this morning that I'm so proud of being part of this legacy, and that I've seen God's faithfulness in my life, I've seen God's blessing in my life. And I want to encourage you this morning, whether you're part of our physical church, you come to us, you physically join our services, or whether you've joined us online faithfully and you, you're always part of our services online. You might not be in PE, you might be out of town, but I want to encourage you today that you form part of that legacy. And so therefore you can claim the blessing that comes, that's rest on, on, on word of faith. You can claim that blessing for yourself this morning.
And as Pastor Richard has said the last couple of weeks, Pastor Richard has specifically ministered about the church. And this morning so powerfully, in spite of the, the test that we've seen as a church, in spite of the trials, we have taken a stand. And God has blessed us and we've seen God's hand in the church. We've seen God's hand move in our, amongst our members, in our connect groups. We've seen God's hand move in the city, in this country because of the blessing and the anointing that rests on this house. And you can claim that for yourself today. And I want to say to you this morning, if you feel like you've been attacked from on every side and you feel overwhelmed with tests and trials and you're going through a specific thing, I want to encourage you this morning to take your stand, to stand firm and to watch how God will come through for you and to see God's hand. Today is, you know, just um, by accident or by, it happens to be my birthday as well. So if ever I can testify about God, I can testify about God's faithfulness. I can testify about His blessing, about being part of this house and seeing the blessing and seeing God's hand fulfilled in my life. And so I've, even for me, my testimony is, is, is that I have taken a stand. And so I want to encourage you this morning, even if you want to type into the comments and say, I take a stand. Let's just type it in the comments. You know, uh, we've got our people in the auditorium that are standing and they're coming forward to show their commitment. You can type in the comments as a show of your commitment. Say, I take a stand. And so, Father, this morning, it is my honor, it is my privilege on this day, on this very special day, to be able to pray for our friends that are online and to speak a blessing, God, that you will come and touch them where they are, Lord, that you will come and touch their families, that you will bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for 40 years of faithfulness, God. Thank you that you are our faithful God and that you walk with us every step of the way. So, Bless your sons and daughters. Bless my brothers and sisters, Lord. And even as we go our separate ways and as we go into this week, Lord, I thank you that your Holy Spirit go before us. Your hand is upon us in Jesus' name. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. At 10, we are going to be, um, I have a full celebration at our 10 o'clock service. It will be online again. It will be on Instagram. It will be on YouTube. So please come and join us again and, and, and you know, be part of our celebration. And remember to share the link with friends and family. But be blessed. Thank you so much. Tonight we won't have a service because we will be celebrating. So God bless you. Thank you for joining us.